Hello, I'm Rosina Plain and welcome to part one of my Letitia's Garden cow. As you might know by, or might be able to guess from the title, um, it, it's in the same format as my last year's um, cow, Letitia's Holiday. So I'm using exactly the same size blankets as we did before. So all, all of the patterns that were in Letitia's Holiday can be sort of mixed and matched with the ones for Letitia's Garden. So that can create some interesting effects. Now in front of me, um, you'll see that that doesn't look much like a garden cowl. These are actually gauge swatches. Um, the swatches that I made when making the tutorial for the, to, to, to show you how to do the inset and the overlay mosaic um, techniques. So the reason for showing you this here is so you can see, but each one of these is, uses exactly the same chart um, with the same hook size, same yarn, um, same number of stitches and rows. So what you should be able to see, so this one is the inset mosaic sample. Um, and you'll notice if you compare it to the overlay mosaic one here that you actually the pattern gets stretched out So instead of having this repeated four times up as we have on the overlay It's only twice but actually for the same number of rows which from the top of my head I think is 24 um, for the same number of rows you actually it's get squashed down and something else that tends to happen as well is if I now just put them this way you should be able to see that the inset mosaic one is actually a little wider than the overlay generally people tend to work overlay mosaic a little looser than the uh, inset mosaic a little looser than the overlay so and as in Letitia's garden just like Letitia's holiday we're going to be actually alternating between the two different methods it's really important to adjust, adjust your hook size so that you don't get this different width so they're both the same so these are both done using a four millimeter hook and i know from experience that to get it this to get the inset down to the same width as the overlay for the same number of stitches i will generally need to use a three and a half millimeter hook so throughout this i'm going to be throughout this whole curl i'm going to be using a three and a half millimeter hook for the um inset sections and a four millimeter for the overlay but it's really really important to do a gauge swatch so you make sure that you get the correct hook sizes for yourself because if you don't do that you will end up with wavy edges on your blanket so all of the overlay bits will sort of go inwards so really please 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 if you haven't already have a look at the introduction file and and do your gauge swatches i would say recommend starting with that half a millimeter um, difference in size you may find that you can get away with using the same hook size for both or some people even need a whole millimeter um, difference in size but whatever it is just to make sure that you get the same stitch count for each time don't worry about the rows because we sort that out with the border but say so definitely make sure that the width is the same okay so now you've done your gauge swatches this first part is using the overlay mosaic technique so make sure you're using the hook that was required for your overlay section so for me that's the four millimeter hook which I've got here you will also need a pair of scissors because we're going to be cutting the yarn at the end of every single row don't worry about the ends though because the lovely envelope border we do at the end the last part of the curl will cover them up and look fantastic okay so make sure you've got your scissors handy and your larger hook um, what I should have also said before, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, um, because the Letitia's Garden comes in the same the same sizes as Letitia's Holiday did, so you've got the sort of three, four or five repeats wide, but also what I found was lots of people wanted to do a narrow one for either sort of a wall hanging or table runner. So I've also included the instructions for that in this cow so and what I'm going to be making is the country garden colors which is these lovely highland heathers um, just the runner for that for this this tutorial so we need to start as I said with our larger hook and we're going to start with 54 chains or you can do 53 foundation double crochet if you want so I want to show you how I start um, rather than 
this is totally optional but rather than doing a, a actual formal slip knot what i tend to do to start a chain is if you can see just twist that around like so and pull my pull my yarn through but don't pull that tight if i pull that tight that will be effectively a slip knot but if we leave it nice and loose we can work into that at the end and that just creates i think a neater a neater edge doesn't matter really right so i'm now going to do well, as i said 54 chains so that's 53 for the um that we're going to need for the actual starting stitch count plus one which is effectively a turning chain just to get us up there so i'm sure you all know how to do a chain just like so you just carry on and when you've done 53 chains uh 54 chains i will see you there okay so i've now done my 54 chains but obviously if you are actually doing the small medium or large blankets you're going to need more stitches than that so just have a little look at the written pattern and that will tell you what your starting stitch count is going to be so i've got my 54 chains and another little tip that i've picked up which just for me when you're starting with chains rather than foundation crochet a double crochet it's nice to actually you can get a neater edge by rather than working and normally you would work into like this loop of the chain but if you just twist the chain round so we missed the first one because that's our effectively our turning chain or it is our turning chain we're going to just flip that over and if you can see this extra loop on the back of the chain it's just going to work into that so now we just need to work all the way along our chain working double crochets into that back bump I'll do a couple more and then I will show you the difference it makes on the bottom oh, so just carry on working along so if you see show you now so the top of the work looks like that as you expect with the two loops but if you by working into the back chain if you can see you've actually got a similar effect on the bottom so when you're working a board or anything else it's so much easier and neater i think anyway to have those the two loops on the bottom but you can do it yeah it's going to be inside a border so if you prefer to do work into the change the normal way that's absolutely fine or indeed as i said for foundation double crochet okay so just carry on working all the way along to the end of your chain there and i will see you just before with the last sort of couple of stitches to go just to show you how i'm going to finish that off okay so i've now got almost to the end of my foundation row here so just got the last three stitches to do so always worth obviously double checking that you've got the right number of stitches before you go any further it makes things a lot easier okay so it's 50 so we've got again carrying on in the back there's 51 52 stitches and this last one we're just going to work into that sort of knot there and then now we can pull that slip knot tight and you can see it gives a much neater edge rather than having this sort of knot sticking out not that it makes much difference when you're going to be doing an envelope border but you know it's just a little tip that i found okay so uh, i know i said that with overlay crochet all overlay mosaic all rows are worked with the right side facing you but we're just gonna just for this one row we're gonna turn so this is effectively our foundation row so what we've done is it's going to be actually on the wrong side of our blanket so do a chain none of, whenever you get the turning change and in the inset sections you will be turning at the end of the row the turning chains never count as a stitch okay so all we've got to do now is just basically go back and work an ordinary double crochet through both loops all the way to the end okay so if you just carry on and do that and I will see you when you've done okay, that so I've now got to the end of row one of the pattern and I have just double checked that I've got the correct number of stitches it's always worth just making that sort of triple check to make sure you've got the correct number of stitches so I have 53 for my runner size one you'll probably have for more if you do you'll obviously have more if you're doing one of the blankets okay so now chopping that off what we do is make sure you pull that through that loop just to secure the end so as i said we're not now going to be turning it we're going to be working with this side facing us for all the rest of this part one section 
so we're now going to start with our um, actual sort of mosaic stitches so this time we'll start with a proper slip knot on the hook so so that gives you a nice clear secure starting point so just make sure you're working through the correct part of the chain uh, of your thing so we want to start the top of our row one so you don't want it twisted we just start in there with oops get hold of it a standard double crochet through both loops so if you're looking at the chart you will see um, there are always two standard double crochets at the end that's our edge stitch it's just to give us a nice firm edge to start with but when we're doing overlay mosaic generally the double crochets aren't worked through both loops they will generally be just through the back loop so I call that a BLDC a back loop double crochet it will be a back loop single crochet if you're following the US terms so what we're going to do on this row is now just working into this back loop it's going to work all the way to the last two stitches just like so so it's nice and easy so just a whole row back loop double crochets and what you should see hopefully you can just see these front loops here which we haven't used yet but we're going to be needing them when we come to actually make the pattern so the thing with um, mosaic crochet is you will only be using one color in each row so although you're getting the pattern it looks like you've changed the colors it's all an illusion really it's really really nice and easy because you're just using one color at a time so none of that fiddly color changing okay so you just carry on working your row of back loop double crochets and I will see you when there's two stitches remaining okay, on your so row. I've now got to the last two stitches on row two so as I said before the first two and last two stitches will always be worked through both loops so there we are we've got to the end of our row so we're just going to fasten that off okay make sure we pull that through so that was our um color it's if you're following the cottage garden or country garden colorways that will be your cc2 color if you're following the city garden which has got a reduced palette there's only actually three contrast colors instead of six for that one then that would have been done in xx2 okay so now it's time to pick up our cc1 again which for me is bracken and as always starting with slip knot on the hook and standing double crochet Ooh, try not to pick up the extra little bit there standing double crochet and then another standard double crochet through booth loops so we have now done that so we've got our first stitch is a back loop double crochet and now the pattern repeat starts so we're going to the pattern repeat starts with another two back loop double crochets so just through that back loop oops and now we're going to do the other overlay mosaic stitch which is a treble in the front loop so that's why we've been leaving these front loops spare so what we're going to do always or nearly always you will be working into the same color so here we will be so we're going to completely miss row two out and work into these front loops left over from row one so just make sure you hold it nice and straight so you can see this would be the stitch you'd normally work into so directly below that is where we are going to place our treble so obviously if you're doing the US terms that would be a double crochet okay so now we have got three back loop double crochets to complete that first repeat there we go so there we go nice and simple that's our first repeat so we're now just going to carry on across so we ended there with three back loop double crochets we need to start the next one with two more so you're going to have all the way along this row you'll basically have five back loop double crochets with one front loop treble in between so if you're a little bit confused about where to place your your treble you can always count back to make sure you've got the correct number 
of your front loop showing see see we should have five here so one two three four five or rather on this row so on row one we are missing one two three four five front loops so that's absolutely right because that meant the five front loops there marries up with the five back loop double crochets we've done so always when you've done a front loop treble should have mentioned it here make sure you miss the stitch behind so we're not going to work into if you can see it into this stitch here we're going to make sure we miss that and now we've got to finish off second repeat with the three back loop double crochets and start the next one with two more so one more time I'll show you that front loop treble two down um, that will also be called if you're following some other designers they will call that either maybe a drop down treble or a mosaic treble but because I use inset and overlay mosaic and they work in slightly different ways I try to actually just give them a description of what it actually is so it will be say for my patterns it's a front loop treble two rows down okay so just carry along like that to the end making sure that the last two stitches so you should end up with three back loop double crochets and then have two stitches left which will be your standard double crochets through both loops so i will see you when you've done that okay so i'm now almost at the end of row three and i'm just gonna finish that off so you can see i ended with the three back loop double crochets there just finish that with the two standard double crochets for the edge stitches cut it off pull it through so now we're going to be adding our main color which for the purpose of this pattern is basically the background so sort of sky if you wish um, so but for the cottage garden, uh, country garden pack that I'm doing now, this is the Starcraft Life double knit in ice blue to give us literally a sky colour. So, again, start with that slip knot on the hook. And this is another nice easy row, just like we did on row two. We're just going to start with our two standard double crochets for the edge stitches. And nice and straightforward back loop double crochets all the way along to the end so well all the way along to the last two stitches so if you want to just do that your row of back loop double crochets until you get to the last two stitches and make sure in the last two you do like we did at the beginning there and just do standard double crochets okay so i've just done um row four and fasten it off at the end after doing the two edge stitches like i said so now we're going to go back to our sort of our cc1 or xx1 color which is basically for the leaves for the leaves of our hyacinths so as always start with that st the standing so the slip knot on your hook and the standing double crochet whoops get off and then another double crochet and this time we're straight in with a front loop treble there so now we're going to start our our repeat our pattern repeat so we start with one back loop double crochet and then so we miss this front loop and then one front loop treble then we've got two back loop double crochets one two and now three front loop treble so again make sure you're working into the correct loop so one, two, three. Then we've got two back loop double crochets. So one, two, one front loop treble, one back loop double crochet, and finally one. One front loop treble. Okay, so that's our first repeat done. Okay, so we are now going to start with back loop double crochet again and a front loop treble. So remember, obviously, the front loop trebles always work that two rows down. 
back loop double crochets are worked into the the, the round the row you'd expect to be working into so we've now got the two back loop double crochets again and now three front loop trebles together one two three two back loop double crochets then we've got a whoops where are we a front loop treble back loop double front loop treble so that's our second repeat done okay so you can just carry on repeating that across the row and you can see I actually now how the pattern is starting to take shape so this is going to be like the stems of our um, the leaves for our hyacinths and this is basically like the grass in between okay so I'll see you when you're ready to start the next row okay so that's row five complete and I've also already joined my main color again for row six and done the first two edge stitches so I'm now going to start before the main repeat we start with a back loop double crochet and now we're starting the main repeat with a front loop treble there we go one back loop double two front loop trebles so what we're actually doing you can see is basically filling in between the trebles that we did on row five so we've now got three back loop double crochets if you see a front loop treble on the previous row you can't do a treble there you know it's always going to have to be a back loop double crochet so that's where the three are there then two front loop trebles one back loop double crochet and one front loop treble and then to complete the repeat we have the last back loop double crochet so now we're going to do that again together so we start the next repeat with a front loop treble again always make sure that's the two rows down one back loop double crochet and then two front loop trebles a little tip if you find you, you see that that pulls up a little bit they usually will settle down later but to help you not pull your trebles too tight it can also be quite helpful you just stick your thumb on that loop just to tension that while you make the first part of your stitch or we'll just get used to try not to tug that too hard so one two three back loop double crochets two front loop trebles one two then we've got one back one front and finishing up the second repeat with one back loop double crochet so like I said basically where we had a treble on the previous row we are working back loop double crochet and where we had the back loop double crochets we're going to be working that front loop treble two rows down and then right until we get to the end where it's the as always the last two stitches are just going to be stand double crochets through both loops so yep yeah, just carry on along there and then i will see you when you're ready to start row seven okay so i have now finished row six um you can see the pattern's starting to take shape one thing i probably should have mentioned before if you're struggling to keep a track of where your pattern repeats end um, what you can do is just get a little stitch mark so I've just put them in place and I've just put them either in the first stitch of a repeat or the last stitch so this is actually I've now actually put my little markers in the last stitch of each repeat so that may help you if you get a little bit lost to just do that so I've now started row seven with my two edge stitches as usual and we just need in there little front loop treble in that first stitch so now we are starting our repeat so I'm going to start that with four back loop double crochets so one two oh dear what's wrong with me today three four 
the yarn skull type. So four back loop double crochets there. Now we've got three front loop trebles right on top of these front loop trebles. So one, two, three. And then we'll have another four back loop double crochets. Three, four. And we're now at our last stitch of our repeat because we've got the, the marker in there. And that's just going to be a front loop treble there. So say, if you find that helps you, then by all means, just pop that marker back in there. Markers are a great friend to you when you're doing mosaic crochet, especially on the more complicated pattern. So, yeah. Okay, so we now start again with our four back loop double crochets. Two, three, four. Three front loop trebles. Oh dear. Three front loop trebles. One, two, three. And now four back loop double crochets again. Two, three, four, four. And again, we now know that the last stitch of our repeat, which is going to be front loop treble tip down. Okay, so we want to carry along just repeating that to the end of the row and remembering. You should end your last sort of proper stitch of the pattern will be like this the end stitch there which is the front loop treble two down on its own and then your two edge stitches so i will see you when you're ready to start row okay, eight so that's row seven complete now and as always i've just started with my two edge stitches in i'll switch back to the main color start with them so now for row eight we're going to need one back loop double crochet before we start to go as you know because every time you see a treble it's got to be a back loop double crochet we've now got three trebles two down front loops trebles two down one two three so we're not working into this last one because we're now going to do five back loop double crochets two three, four, five. So this is just allowing for the start of our leaves for our hyacinths. Okay. So we've now got three front loop trebles again. And we finish our first repeat with that back loop double crochet. Okay. So we'll do that again together. So we're starting with our three front loop trebles, two, three, and we've got five back loop double crochets, three, four, five, three front loop trebles. And we're going to end that repeat with a back loop double crochet. Okay, so as always, just carry on repeating that across the row and I'll see you when you're about to start row nine. So that is now row eight complete. So, and as always, I've just started with the two edge stitches there. So we start with the front loop treble two down. And now we're ready to start on our first repeat. So we're going to start with the three back loop double crochets over the top of these trebles. Now we've got five front loop trebles. So we are working into all of these front loops in this little section here. Three, four, and then a little back loop double crochet over the top of all these trebles for row eight 
and finally we end that first repeat with the front loop treble so there's another nice easy one where we're just basically working back loop double crochets over all the trebles and then when we get to where we had the back loop double crochets on row 8 we're going to be doing our front loop trebles two rows down to fill that in so three back loop double crochets three five front loop trebles oh dear can't can't crochet today one two three four five then we've got three back loop double crochets two three and we end up with one treble there okay so as always just carry on along repeating that till you get to the end and remembering to do your two normal double crochets for your final edge stitches and I will see you again to do the okay, next so row. this is row nine completed one thing I probably should have mentioned before if you're actually following the chart um, the colours shown on it will make it look like you need to use a different colour in a row um, but as I said before we're only using one so those colours are there just to basically give you an idea of how the design looks all you need to worry about on the colours front is what is, sh is the colour that is shown for the edge stitches on the in each end of each row so for row 10 which we're about to start you'll see that is the main the main colour colour shown there and all you then need to worry about when you're doing that row is where you see an F. So um, some people may put an X in a lot of a lot of designers will put an X there. Some will use a D for a drop down um, treble. But basically, wherever you see that capital F, that's telling you that's where you need to do a front loop treble two rows down. So that's all you need to worry about. Forget the colours if they're confusing you. Just look for the Fs. When you see an F, do that front loop treble two rows down any stitch on one of my charts without any kind of symbol in it at all when you're doing the overlay mosaic that means it's a back loop double crochet so say if you've just if you follow your eye across a line um, like when we did the first row of the main color down here you'll see there were no actual symbols on that row at all so you knew that the whole row was going to be a back loop double crochet so say that's just um to help you with reading the charts okay so I'm now going to start row 10 and as usual I've already done my edge stitches so we're going to start the back loop double crochet and starting the first repeat with two oops two front loop trebles okay so on the chart you'll see there's two F's there so now we've got to do seven back loop double crochets one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then two front loop trebles. One, two, and finally in that first repeat, a back loop double crochet. Okay, okay so now we are at the we've done row ten. And I'm about to do 11 so as usual I've already done the edge stitches and now what we're going to do we're going to start with a back loop double crochet there before the main repeat starts so now we start the main repeat we've still got another two back loop double crochets to go and then we've got two front loop trebles and, whoops two then well, back loop double crochets so we've now split it so we've got the start of a leaf one front loop treble for the stem of the flower one back loop double crochet in between and then another leaf there like so okay so we now end that repeat with three back loop double crochets two three ready to start the next one with two back loop double crochets again so again just carry on to the end of that row um, remembering to do your standard double crochets at, 
at the end and then also if you want to do row um, 12 too and I will see you when you're about to start row 13 here I am at the start of row 13 so after 12 rows your, your work should be looking like that okay so we're back to CC1 or XX1 again and as always I've done the two edge stitches so we're starting just before the main repeat starts with a back loop double crochet and now we need two more of those because as I've said before when you see work trebles on the previous row they ha the only stitch you can do is a back loop double crochet okay so we now have two front loop trebles one back loop double crochet one front loop treble one back loop double and two front loop trebles and then we finish our repeat with three back loop double crochet okay so as always repeat that across when you finish doing that however many times you need to to get to the end you shall have the two stitches left which will be the ordinary double crochets for the edge stitches so yeah if you want a complete row 13 and 14 and i will see you to do row 15 together right, so this is what your work should be looking like after row 14 so you can see the shape of the leaves are all really starting to take shape now so as always i've got my edge stitches in my cc one and we're now going to start with one back loop double crochet before the repeat proper starts and then we have another back loop double crochet for the first stitch of the repeat we're now going to work two front loop trebles two oops and then two back loop double crochets one front loop treble for the stem of the flower two back loop double crochets and then we've got two front loop trebles for the other leaf Oops. and then we end the repeat with two back loop double crochets so there we go so all ready to start the next repeat with that back loop double crochet so yeah just carry on and complete that row and you should be okay now to complete the next three rows after that I think so if you get up to you complete row 18 um, we'll be ready to start row 19 when we're going to actually be starting on the flowers okay, so here we are so. at the end of row 18 so we've now finished with our sort of leaves and and stem of the hyacinth and we're now going to start on the flowers so I've got my first two edge stitches all down there and we're now going to be switching to say the flower color which will be shade cc5 or xx3 if you're doing the city palette okay so we start with that initial back loop double crochet which is before the main repeat starts and now the main repeat will start with four more so one two three four we've now got three front loop trebles over here one two three and we end the repeat with five back loop double crochets two three five so there we go so obviously we're now going to start again with our full back loop double crochet so it's a nice easy row really you're just going to be basically working your front loop trebles where you've got these um, spare loops here and in between you're going to have runs of nine back loop double crochets and of course ending with our two normal standard double crochets at the end so yeah carry on along there um do the next couple of rows and i will see you when we're ready to start row well, row 23 i think 
Okay. And I just completed row 22 and started off row 23 with my two edge stitches and this first little back loop double crochet that comes before we start the main repeat. So now we need one more double back loop double crochet. And then front loop treble. And now we've got one back loop double crochet two front loop trebles and we're just going to repeat those so another back loop double crochet and two front loop trebles and then we're going to finish this row of the flower head with a back loop double crochet and one front loop treble and then that first repeat is going to end with our two back loop double crochets so you can see how that flower is starting to take shape and hopefully you can see how by just leaving out these occasional little spots there it helps to give you a texture sort of similar well the effect of um, the actual the little flowers that would be on a hyacinth at least that's what I hope it looks like okay so if you just now complete that row um, as usual just repeating that across and do row 24 and I will see you before you start row 25 just done row 24 um, and the next four rows are actually exactly the same as the last four rows so what we're now going to do is go back to row 21 and do rows 21 to 24 again so I'll just start that first bit of the repeat again so here we have as usual two edge stitches and that first back loop double crochet before the main repeat starts so we've now got another two back loop double crochets and then we've got one front front loop treble one back loop double crochet three front loop trebles one two oops two three Back loop double crochet, front loop treble, and we've now got to end the repeat with our three back loop double crochets. So there we go. So as always, continue that repeat across, do the next um, three rows after that too and I will see you when we are about to start row 29. This is what your pattern should be looking like after you've done row 28 so you can see the little flower flowers are really taking shape now so we're just now gonna basically do the last little bit of the flowers here so we now start I've already started with that the edge stitches and the back loop double crochet before the main repeat so we've now got to do another two back loop double crochets one front loop treble One back loop double crochet, three front loop trebles, back loop double crochet, and a front loop treble, and then we end that repeat. Oh, it's all caught up. We end that repeat with you can see that's pulled up but what that should do when I now do the next few stitches is just settle down a bit so we've got one two three back loop double crochets to finish that repeat yeah, just tidy them up so that looks fine so again repeat that across and if you do rows 30 31 and 32 too we will have then completed the flower heads and we can then start on the little decorative pattern of our completed so hyacinths um i've actually also done row 33 because that was basically just a nice simple one where apart from the two edge stitches at each end it was just back loop double crochets all the way along so rather than doing that with you uh, I'm ready to start row 34 and this is a nice simple one too actually I've just started as always with my edge stitches and the first back loop double crochet before you start the main repeat and there are all the repeat is on this one is three front loop trebles so one two 
three, followed by a back loop double crochet. So just want to repeat that all the way across three front loop trebles. And one back loop double crochet. So this little decorative pattern at the end of part one is quite nice and simple. It's just got this four stitch repeat. So carry on and do this row and do the next few rows and I will see you when we're ready to start row 38. Okay, so row 38 was actually another nice straightforward one where it was just basically back loop double crochets all the way along apart from obviously the edge, edge stitches. So I've just done that. We've also now finished with our main colour for part one. And we're just now going to be working with the last two colours just for the last few rows. So I've started row 39 um, with the edge stitches and this first little back loop double crochet before the repeat. And again, it's nice and simple. It's actually exactly the same as row 37. So we're just going to be doing start this repeat with the treble three down and then a back loop double crochet and just basically repeat that all the way along so you want to carry on and you should be now able now to complete part one and we'll just see you right at the end to show you what the finished part one will look like so I've now done row 42, which is the final row of part one um, and the final row of this first little installment of Overlay Mosaic Crochet. So I hope you've enjoyed doing that. We will be coming back to this technique in part three, but next time we're going to be doing the other major um, mosaic crochet technique, which I call inset, so inset mosaic. So, so I look forward to seeing you then.